Today's review is all about the Nikon Z6. Now Nikon is sort of close to me because I shot Nikon for about eight years or something like that before I switched over to Sony. And so it was a big part of my career and a big part of my growth in the industry and all that sort of stuff. And it was just a really sort of cool time for me. Now I chose the Z6 because I felt the Z7 was a little bit more inaccessible for people. I felt the Z6 would be more popular amongst wedding photographers. So I went with that and I got the 35mm 1.8, the native one, and I uh, shot a wedding with it. So this review is gonna be everything from a real world point of view, how I feel about the Z6. It'll definitely be comparing it to my Sony's a little bit because it's just my base level now. I'm gonna sprinkle images all through the review, so let's get straight into it. So first off, let's just talk about the grip and the aesthetics and how it is to hold and things like that. So first off, the grip is decent. I say I probably prefer my Sony grip with the little L plate that I have on the bottom of it, just for my pinky. It just feels a little bit better. I think the EOS R grip is better than both of the others, but uh, you know, it's fine, it's not nothing to complain about, it's just not my preferred one. I do really like the little screen on top of the camera, I talked about that in the EOS R review as well, but um, because I hip shoot so much, I find myself with my camera down by my side, and when I can just look down and get a quick glance at my settings and things like that on the top screen, that's really nice for me because I don't like having it all busy on the LCD screen, so I usually keep it clear. The shutter button has a nice sort of tactile feel to it, no complaints there. I didn't like the rear dial for changing the settings, the front one's fine, but uh, the, the rear one I'd rather have probably an exposure compensation dial like I have on my Sony's for that, and maybe a little dial at the back. The tilt screen is nice, it's pr pretty much the same as my a7R 3 but the only issue I had with it, which was the same with the a7R 2s and I'm sure it can be fixed with a firmware update, when you have it folded out on my a7R 3 for example, it automatically disables the eye sensor so you can hold the camera right close to your body and it doesn't turn the LCD screen off. With the Nikon it doesn't do that so when you have the screen folded out you have to sort of keep it away from your body a bit otherwise the screen will go blank so that definitely needs to be changed with firmware update but other than that the screen's really nice no issues with that. I did notice the rear screen is quite a bit different in terms of colors compared to the EVF which not it's not really a big deal but it definitely looks a little bit different and I found both of the screens were quite yellow. I found that when I looked at the images on my computer, they didn't have that yellow look that they did in the screen and in the viewfinder. Now we all know it has one card slot, but you know, whatever, We've everybody's talked about that. It is what it is. Hopefully the next one has too, but it's a bit of a deal breaker. And I did find when I picked up the camera, I got it home and I realized I went to put my SD card in and I forgot that it's XQD card. Now, that's not a massive problem, but XQD cards are really expensive and it's probably more a New Zealand issue. But when you go to all the stores around New Zealand, they don't really sell XQD cards like Harvey Norman, Noel Leemings, all those sort of crowds. They, they didn't, most of them didn't even know what an XQD card was. So the only place you can get XQD cards is camera stores, which is fine, it's easy. But if you're in a situation where maybe one of your cards failed during a, during a job, you can't just run to the local store and get an XQD card at this point in time. I'm sure that'll change over time, but the XQD cards are much faster and definitely more reliable than SD cards. So it's a give and take. Let's talk about focusing now. So the AFS, if you're a person that uses AFS focus single shot, it's really good. It's quite snappy. It locks on. It's super accurate being a mirrorless camera. There's no need to calibrate lenses or anything like that. The AFC, however, is really not that great. It, I found it hunted quite a lot. The low light focusing was quite bad and it just sort of had quite a few issues just tracking subjects in general. And one thing I did notice, which is probably obvious, that I instantly missed having the Sony eye focus. When you're shooting a wedding, I probably use that 90% of the time because I'm generally focusing on people. But yeah, if you're using AFS, you'd probably really like it, but AFC, I think it would probably annoy you. Video focus on the other hand was really really good, I quite liked it, I'd say it's at least as good as the Sony cameras which is a great change. In the past when I was on the D750s and the D810, you guys will know if you shoot with those cameras that the focus for video just isn't even usable. So it's a massive change and it works really really nicely. 
The stabilization is also really good for video. I found it's probably better than the Sony stabilization by a little bit. Uh, you can walk around quite smoothly with the 35mm and just get some really nice smooth shots. You can see it's handheld, but it's definitely smooth. I found the focus point joystick on the back was quite good, but I missed having the option to press in to go back to the middle section like I have on my Sony's. So you can still do that, but you have to go from the focus joystick down to the OK button and press that and it goes back to the middle. It just kind of makes sense being able to press in because the function is there. I'm not sure maybe you can program it, but I don't think so looking through the menu. So that would be a really nice option to have also. Let's talk about image quality now. So this is definitely probably the best part about this camera. I definitely expected it to have good image quality being an icon. They've always had really good sensors and the dynamic range is huge. You can bring up the shadows and get really little amount of grain. The highlights can be recovered really nicely. The colors are nice. Um, I definitely preferred the Sony colors just a little bit, but it's just a personal preference. And once you edit the files, you really can't tell the difference. But the images definitely had a kind of yellowy tint to them and you had to sort of adjust presets a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. I found out of all the cameras I've tried, the Sony definitely had the best auto white balance. Now I'll just quickly touch on the 35mm 1.8 because that lens is really amazing. It was just a beautiful lens to use, really sharp. I shot it pretty much at 1.8 most of the day and uh, you know, no issues with aberration or sometimes with lenses like that you get sort of weird fringing when you've got really extreme highlights behind people, say if you're backlighting them. This didn't have any of that so it was really good to see. Definitely recommend the 35 and 1.8 if you're gonna pick up one of these cameras. Next thing I wanted to talk about was battery life. So the battery life was quite bad in my experience. I've heard mixed things. Um, someone commented on my YouTube channel saying that they got about 900 shots out of one battery, whereas I got about 420 shots out of a battery and it just went dead. So quite bad battery life. I'm not sure if maybe it was because the battery is quite new and it needs to be worn in a little bit, but 420 shots is not cool in my opinion, and that needs to be improved. So in general, I think the Nikon Z6 is a really good start. It definitely needs a lot of improving, but it's a great camera, and I think a lot of people outside of the wedding industry are really gonna like it. Like if you do landscape or a lot of video and stuff like that, it's a great camera. So in general, I think the Nikon Z6 is a really good start for Nikon. I think it's definitely a good place to grow from. I think it'll expand in the future, and hopefully they improve the focus tracking and things like that. But in general, it's a really good camera. It has really nice image quality. It's nice to hold. The lenses are really nice. That 35mm, I really loved it. But definitely a little way to go. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they have next. Now that I've used the Sony's, I've used the EOS R, I've used the Nikon Z6, I've used a whole bunch of different cameras at weddings and real situations. I've taken the images back to my computer, edited them all the way I normally do. And what I found at the end of the day was that after I'd edited my images, they all looked like the same photos. They all were the same, they were all my style. You couldn't tell which camera I was using. The biggest difference is how you get the raw file. So in terms of usability and focus and all that sort of stuff, it's all that stuff leading up to the point of the raw capture that makes the difference with these cameras. It's not the end result. That's all down to you and the photographer in person. It, it just is completely irrelevant. I found the image quality on all of them was really great. It's just like I said, the process leading up to the raw file is where the cameras differ. So that's it from me guys. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and following along. It's still growing really quickly. So really happy with that. Let me know what you guys want to see next in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.